So we're supposed to find the torsion of this curve. One way to do that is to use our formula here. The torsion is minus db ds dot n. Of course, calculating db ds would be hard, so we'll calculate db dt and divide by the speed. So we'll get we'll uh, we'll need to calculate uh, t so that we can get n. Then with d cross n, we can find b. Then we can find the root of b with respect to t divided by the speed. Dot it back with n. And then we'll finally have the torsion. We'll come back and do this with the other formula as well, but let's try that way first. Okay, so first we need to get our unit tangent, which is going to be the velocity um, divided by the speed. Let's see, now our velocity, um, to take these derivatives, we're going to have to use the product rule a bunch. So we get the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Let's see, the derivative of the cosine is minus sine, so we'll write it as e to the t minus e to the t sine t. Okay, and then we have e to the t, derivative of the first, times the second, plus the first, times the derivative of the second. And the derivative of square root uh, 2, e to the t, would be the square root of 2, e to the t. And we need to find, that's the velocity, so we need to divide by the, by the speed. If we square this, we're going to get e to the 2t cosine squared t and then minus 2 e to the 2t cos t sine t and then plus e to the 2t sine squared t we can see there's going to be a lot of simplification it's going to take a minute when we multiply this out we're going to get another um, e e to the 2t sine squared t so there's going to be two of those and then we'll get, we're going to get a plus to e to the 2t sine t cos t that will wipe that out and then we'll get another e to the 2t cos squared t so we'll have two of those and then when we add this in there we're going to have if we square that we get 2e to the 2t okay that wasn't so bad um, in fact this 2e to the 2t cos squared plus 2e to the 2t sine squared is just 2e to the 2t plus another 2e to the 2t this whole thing is um, the square root of 4e to the 2t, which is just uh, 2e to the t. All right, so now we have our unit tangent. I could write it more compactly here. If we divide by 2e to the t, we have 1 half cos t minus 1 half sine t. And we have 1 half sine t plus 1 half cos t. And dividing this by 2e to the t gives us root 2 over 2. So there's our unit tangent. Now to find the normal, we're going to find the derivative of the unit tangent and divide by its length, so the length of the derivative of the unit tangent. So the derivative of the unit tangent would be, let's see, negative 1 half sine t minus 1 half cosine t comma, the derivative here is cos t, so we have 1 half cos t minus 1 half sine t, and the derivative of root 2 over 2 with respect to t is 0. Now the length of that, we've got to divide by the length of t prime to make it to make n a unit vector. So we can see when we square these, we are going to get some terms that cancel. So we square this, we're going to get a 1 quarter sine squared t and a minus one quarter sine t cos t. I don't know it's going to be a plus one quarter sine t cos t because it's a negative times a negative. And then we'll get a plus one quarter cosine squared t. And we square this, we'll get another one quarter cosine squared t, so that'll make two quarters cosine squared t. And we'll get a minus one quarter sine t cos t. Oh, except for there were two of these when I did that. Okay, so the middle terms, there was already a two there. Now we have a minus one half, so um, that's going to cancel this, and then the last term will be a one quarter sine squared, so that'll make two quarters sine squared. So all of this underneath that root just becomes um, one half sine squared plus one half cosine squared is just one half. So this is the the square root of one half or one over root two. So if we multiply top and bottom by root two, then what we get for the unit normal, we take root two times this, we have negative root two over two 
sine t minus root 2 over 2 cos t. And then we have root 2 over 2 cos t minus root 2 over 2 sine t and then 0 for our unit normal. Once we have that, we can find our um, binormal by taking t cross n. So b is t cross n. So we'll calculate here what b is. i, j, and k. Um, so for our t cross n, we have 1 half cos t minus 1 half sine t. And then we have 1 half sine t plus 1 half cos t. And then we have a root 2 over 2. And then down below, we have negative root 2 over 2 sine t minus root 2 over 2 cos t. And then the middle term is root 2 over 2 cos t minus root 2 over 2 sine t, and then a 0. So let's look at the entries for b. So we have j times 0 minus um, this product. Let's see, root 2 over 2 times root 2 over 2 is going to be 2 over 4, and that's 1 half. And um, so we're going to get a 1 half sine t minus a 1 half cos t. 1 half sine t minus 1 half cos t. Now for j, uh, oh, I got ahead of myself. C0, yeah, okay. Now for j, we have um, root 2 over 2 times um, negative root 2 over 2 sine t and negative root 2 over 2 cos t. And then we're going to subtract um, 0. Okay, so we get, again, root 2 over 2 times negative root 2 over 2 makes negative 1 half. So we get negative 1 half sine t and um, negative 1 half cos t. Now we've got to find our k component. So our k component is going to be this product minus that product. So this one is um, root 2 times cos t minus sine t squared. And this one is root 2, is negative root 2 times um, hmm, sine t plus cos. Oh yeah, negative root 2 times um, 1 half sine t plus cos t squared. So um, I think we can we can get this product here. Um, before, if I factor out the root two, then we've got um, we've got one half cos t. We've got one half of this squared, and we have basically one half of this squared. And when we did that before, we came out um, to having just. Um, one half sine squared, so we have root 2 times 1 half sine squared t plus 1 half cosine squared t. Okay, close that. Oh, okay, but that is just 1 half, isn't it? So we have just root 2 over 2. Now, since there's been a lot of calculation here, we probably ought to just check and make sure that our result b is actually perpendicular to t and to n. So if we look at taking b dotted with n, um, we've got basically here between the sine and cosine, they have the same sign. Here they have um, opposite signs. So this is going to give us an a minus b times an a plus b. Um, and then when we do this, we've got um, essentially the same thing. Here, this, the sine t and the cosine t have the same sign. And um, this term is the same as that term, but with a negative 1. OK, so basically, 
um, these terms are switched and the sign on one is switched so we know that dot product is going to be zero. Okay, so we're good with b and n. Their dot product is zero. Now if we take b dotted with t, um, then this is, they both have opposite signs, huh? So that's going to be some kind of square and that's going to be, these both have the same sign, those both have the same sign, so that's going to be um, one quarter the square of sine t plus cosine t and then these um, they make one half so let's see before actually we squared this and um, <coughs> we did it here when we had to um, when we added up those squares this gave us um, one half now because of the signs we're going to get negative one half good okay I'm convinced now that b and t that their dot product is zero. All right, so we're almost ready to start computing um, tau. We have n. What we need to do is to figure out dB dt and divide it by the speed. That's how we're going to get dB ds. So to get dB dt over the speed, let's see, dB dt is going to again be, let's see, one half cos t uh, minus one half sine t and oh, plus one half sine t because the cosine is the negative sign and there's already a negative and then minus one half cos t um, um, uh, plus one half sine t Okay, and then the derivative of this last piece is zero. Now we've already calculated the speed once before. It was 2e to the t. Okay, so we've got dB dt over, over speed. So that's this is dB ds. Now we just need to dot it with n. When we dot it with n, Okay, we can see what happens here. All right, so um, if we do dB ds and we dot it with n, then when we multiply these together, they both have a sine plus a cosine, but this one's got a negative. So we have um, negative one quarter. When you multiply sine plus cosine times sine plus cosine, you get sine squared t plus 2 sine t cos t um, plus cosine squared t and then when you dot these two together again we get a negative one quarter but we get um, in the middle we get sine squared t minus 2 sine t cos t and then we get plus cosine squared t. All right, now when we when we um, add those two up, let's see, the plus and the minus cancel. Sine squared and cosine squared is one, so we have negative one quarter and negative one quarter. That's equal to negative one half. Um, we haven't divided by the, I forgot to divide by the two e to the t, so we have negative one over four e to the t. And torsion is the opposite of that, so torsion is going to be one quarter e to the t.